Okay. Um, it takes you actually only a matter of hours before the city comes into sight. Mm-hmm. Um, as it does, you can see the, the wall and the city gates look as though they've been hastily reinforced. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are a number of guards uh, manning the walls and the gatehouse, uh, which would not, you normally wouldn't see that number of men there. Usually you might see a single guard at the gate. Mm-hmm. Um, as you approach the gate, one of the guards, uh, a large, thin man with a hooked nose and a red beard steps forward and demands that you halt. I'll handle this. We halt. <laughs> uh, he, asks, he demands to know who you are and what your business is here. Well, let me tell you, and I take my loot out. Oh, God. Right, none of that. <laughs> I'll step good sir, forward good sir. and... What are you about and be sharp with it? I'll use my diplomacy skill. Um, good sir, good well. sir. We are we are uh, elite guardsmen, an elite team of elite strike force uh, sent from the capital to defend your city. We've already been fending off bandits attacking these caravans. Okay. Um, are you using diplomacy? Uh, no, I'm using bluff. Okay. I make up an insane tale about how we're uh, elite guardsmen sent by the king himself to defend oh, the city. Give me going the entire time, I'm shaking my head no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give me a roll with a penalty. <laughs> I'll give you my my base my base roll. Uh, that would be my roll. Uh, okay. Despite the people behind you <laughs> shaking their heads vigorously, <laughs> he seems. <laughs> strangely intrigued by your tale. <laughs> As Tor notices that this gentleman, this guardsman, starts to believe him, he will simply tell them the truth instead. Okay. I will vigorously shake my head yes at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um. So you're going to tell him what exactly? That we were traveling here, and we met on the road, started traveling together. In our travels, we came across this, these two being attacked by bandits. We helped them in their peril, and then traveled with them the rest of the way to keep them safe, which brings us to here. Exactly bandits. what I said. Bandits, where? I'll give them the location. Well, let me tell you where they are, and I take my loot out. <laughs> Stop that. We'll have none of that. Back on the road. <laughs> he says, it's strange that we should see bandits this close to town. And he said, uh, you, you may enter the, the town. Um, if you would be so kind, I would appreciate if you could make your way to the watch hall and inform the Lord there of this bandit attack. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your patience. Okay. He waves you through. Sure. Okay. Um, Arlen, which is the old man, uh, says that they have made arrangements ahead of time at one of the inns. Mm -hmm. And he's going to take the Aliana there. Um, he asks if you would meet, meet them there later this evening. At the end, he has something he wants to discuss with you. Does the inn have a cool name? Is it the brown the elf? Brown, brown elf, yes. It's not the brown elf. <laughs> um, we would um, be honored to meet you later, sir. Yeah. It's it's Alwick's Tavern, actually, if you must know. Alwick, that guy owes okay. me 50 bucks. <sighs> okay. Um. So what are you guys going to do? Are you going to... I'm going to go deliver the... Report to the watch people as they ask. Okay, um, he's giving you directions, and it's not hard to find. Uh, the town is not not terribly large, although it is very cluttered at the moment. There's a, a, a huge influx of people into the city, and the streets are are crammed with both refugees and people trying to sell items to them or take advantage of them in various ways. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, amidst the hasty construction and ramshackle buildings, the watch barrack stands out. Its military lines and thick stone walls seem poised to fend off the clutter of buildings and carts that fill the surrounding streets. The architecture is very old, but the structure is clean and well kept, and a single guard stands before the door. Mm -hmm. uh, it appears to be very young, though. I'll present myself to the guard at the door uh, and uh, request uh, instruction on how to make a report. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, report of what? Bandit attack. Bandits here? Not far from town. Oh, oh, oh. That's different. Um, hold on a second. He, he goes rushing inside. And a few moments later, he returns and instructs you to go in and down the hall to the watch commander's office. He says, sir, Naylor is, is waiting for you there. <laughs> Thank Naylor. you very much. <laughs> what? <laughs> Naylor. Um, uh... I'll uh, step inside and head towards the, was it Captain Naylor? We'll, we'll follow. Okay, uh, Sir Naylor. All right. <clears throat> okay, um, you're able to find his office easily. It's right down the hall from there. Um, you see, it's an old gentleman with just graying hair. He's wearing very uh, fine clothes uh, in a well-appointed office. I'll give him sort of a. I don't know what protocol would be in in this particular realm, but I'll give him a sort of semi-formal respectful nod as we come in i'll give okay. a deep i'll give a bow okay i'll take my loot out <laughs> he looks at you he looks up at you and he says so i understand you had some difficulty on the roads here not much difficulty actually oh, um, <laughs> there were bandits but they did not present a difficulty uh, it was it was pretty hard there's at least 17 of them there's a tremendous amount of effort. It's difficult to undertake without some major form of compensation. Because <laughs> 17 bandits. And you have some proof of this? There were. Oh, yeah. Each, each one of them had a gold coin. <laughs> <laughs> but there were only 15 gold coins. That you know about. <laughs> I said. I took this mace off one of them. Um, yes. You can, if you want confirmation of our story, you can, of course, speak to uh, uh, at Aylwick's Tavern, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. I give him the guy's name. And he says, well, we will, of course, uh, dispatch uh, a patrol to investigate this. But... If you'd been able to bring us some proof, we, we do have a uh, bounty on the heads of bandits. Oh, now oh. we got to ride all the way back there to behead a bunch of bandits? That's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'm going to start heading back there. <laughs> what do you require as proof, sir? He says, no, I will dispatch some of my men to, to investigate. If there's bandit activity in the area, we need to know about it anyway. When you dispatch your men, let them know they're looking for six bodies and I explain where the lo the location was. I so the rest of them got away? We were hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I look at him like he's being obtuse and kinda step back from the conversation. You just say there were seventeen of them, right? It was a chaotic situation. There there may have been, you know, we're not exactly sure of the exact number. I can't count. <laughs> I see. You will definitely find... We can't guarantee the numbers, but you will definitely find a number of bodies there. I see. Well, as I said, I will dispatch some men immediately. Um, in the meantime, I advise you find yourself a place to stay. Uh, with the refugees in town and the, the huge influx of people, there's not much in the way of accommodations, but you might perhaps find a room at the Leaping Pike. Um, how about Aylwick's Tavern? Uh, do they, is there, do they have rooms there? Uh, if you have the means, they might, but I 
Doubt it. Uh, okay, I like Leaping Pike. I like the like the thought of that. Thank you, sir, for the tip. Yeah. Certainly, he goes back to his documents. Um, um, okay. Um, I I take Tor Tor aside and say, I think this we have a the uh, the cadre for a pretty strong team here. I think there's. Uh, Despite the rather greedy nature of our two compatriots, I think there's uh, a real difference we can make in these parts. Perhaps we might start making a difference by not making the lives harder of those who work for a living. To which do you refer? Lying to the guardsmen of the city on any occasion you have the opportunity to? Sometimes it's just... You know, it's uh, we 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 don't lie. We embellish sometimes. It's really you know just whatever the guards need to hear. The guardsman at the gate has to make a report on who enters the city, and he is the only one who gets in trouble for misrepresentation. Not you. And I this understand. guardsman here will end up sending five riders instead of one to find seventeen corpses instead of six. You've done nothing but harm them. The seventeen corpses was not my was not my words. That was. Uh, uh, Sir Clancy Pants may have uh, mentioned uh, 17 warriors, but uh, <laughs> it's really hard to have a serious conversation, <laughs> <laughs> especially with a Sir Clancy Pants in the party. Uh, Sir Clancy Pants mentioned the 17 bodies. He, he, he got a little carried away. I, I understand where you're coming from. We'll we'll do our best to keep it in check here. But I think the larger point is this is quite an excellent group here. You see how easily we dispatch those bandits. Indeed. What are you suggesting? Suggesting we team up and maybe, maybe, maybe the old man has something and has a job for us. I think we ought to hear him out. Well, certainly. Let's go see the old man and decide from there. Okay. Um, Does the old man have a name? Arlen. Arlen, thank you. Um. Or is the insane one and the lazy one coming with? Uh, do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it seems like a long walk. All right. Yes. Well, unless you want to sleep in the streets, I think we ought to get moving. No. Is it is it wet out? Oh, do we have a little uh, rain? Uh, like has it rained recently no. or? <laughs> No, it's All a nice right. dry day. Okay. Okay. Uh, sure. <clears throat> okay. Um, so you're going to where? To Alwix? Yes. Okay. Um, you get to Alwix Tavern. Uh, it's a large, very fancy looking inn. Mm hmm. Um,. As you you step through the doors, you can see that the place is packed with all sorts of merchants and minor nobility. Um, asking around, you're very quickly able to find where uh, Arlen and Aliana have rooms. Mm -hmm. Upstairs. Um, you go upstairs and knock on the door, and, and Arlen opens the door. And when he sees you, he welcomes you and, and invites you in. Okay. And I'll bow with a flourish says, of my hat. <laughs> okay. Um, he says, "Well, you've you've done us a great service, and as I've mentioned previously, we we've, we've set upon a road to Coragos." And given the troubles we've had so far, we could use an escort there. And if you'd be willing, we might be able to pay you a fair sum. Uh, sure. What do you consider a fair sum, just out of curiosity? Uh, 200 pieces of gold. Mm, that seems like a fair sum. My, uh, my search looks like it suddenly was corrected. 
Count us in, I think. I look around to make sure everyone's nodding in agreement. Okay. He says, well, uh, is everyone else agreeing? Uh, 200 per, right? <laughs> oh, not that rich. <laughs> I suppose I suppose I will accept for the good of the party, even though a fine swashbuckler such as myself uh, would uh, rarely deign to lower himself for working for something as base as, base as coin. <laughs> well, then you can stay behind, and we can make this foot larger. <laughs> never, I shall. I would never abandon my companions. A swashbuckler does not do such things. I thought you were a barbarian. I'm gonna. Let's see. What is my insight exactly, sir? You dare insult me? <laughs> I roll a seven to see if the gnome is actually insane. <laughs> Clearly not. <laughs> or you're not sure. <laughs> Obviously, the pretense of being a barbarian must have been a mere charade. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait, somebody else in this party has a ridiculous French name. Uh, actually, there's only one person who doesn't have a ridiculous name in this party. <laughs> I have two ridiculous names. Okay, um, Arlen looks at you and he says, well, then it seems we're agreed. We are setting sail on a ship two days from now. Mm -hmm. So, if you'll make such preparations as you need. Now, are we, uh, so we're accompanying you on the, the, just to get this clear, the ship voyage and then the land voyage after that? Yes. Okay. Okay. And is, uh, is... Uh, food covered in this? Yes. Okay. Oh, thank God. And they'll pay your passage, obviously, as well. Yeah. Okay. So how many days before they leave? Two days from now. All right. Um, if every if everyone is done, I'm going to head down into the main room in order to make certain inquiries, which I've already told you about. Yep. And also to set up shop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I take my loot out. Okay. Um, at a, at a quick observation, you you can tell that you're not going to be able to get a room here. The place is quite queer, clearly uh, booked. Um, uh, Sir Silverblade, if if I may, perhaps we would uh, this place uh, being the fancy place that it is, books in advance. Perhaps we ought to go to this. Uh, what's it called? The the Pike uh, Leaping Pike. The Leaping Pike. Uh, we. First off, we probably want a cheaper room than here. And the Leaping Pike, I'll work with you and get you a good audience down there. Trust me. Uh, capital idea, sir. Perhaps you should secure some more lodgings while I make some inquiries as to the fine gentleman here. Uh, you perhaps, perhaps you might not understand. After all, they are of a different class. But I shall, I shall join you presently. <laughs> Come look us up. We'll, we'll get to have the rooms uh, when you, uh, when you want to do your little. Uh, uh, I take my loot out. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that worked. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um, okay, so we, can I get these guys all to come over to the Leaping Pike? Okay. You're so, asking for an awful lot of walking. So Do you uh, really want to pay the prices that are here? I just want to lie down in the street at this point. Uh, D'Artagnan is going to stay at the other place long enough in order to, you know, spread tales of heroism and uh, make a little cash if he can, and also to make those inquiries that we talked about before. Okay, yeah, I already sent you that. Okay. Um, okay. Well, the the rest of you then head uh, to the Leaping Pike, which is a dockside inn which you're able to find with little difficulty. Mm-hmm. Uh, a picture of a fish leaping from the water adorns the sign on the wall beside the establishment. While well, the exterior is worn and gray, the interior is warm and inviting. A fire roars in the hearth, and people talk quietly at nearly every table. An old woman moves between the tables with a pint in each hand and a clay pipe clenched in her teeth. She seems to address the patrons each by name while deftly maneuvering through the crowds dispersing drinks. A rail-thin old man with white hair tends the bar. His movements are slow and purposeful. The patrons appear to be mostly sailors and longshoremen, and the mood seems lively. Um, 
we ask if they have rooms available, rooms for the night. They do indeed. Um, they have two rooms available. Um, hold on one second. Let me just deal with this idiotic interface here. I'll ask to share a room with Tours. He looks like the, the fellow least likely to rob me in the night. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Can't say no to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, Sir Clancy Pants, uh, perhaps you uh, rather so we don't have to go to the trouble of divvying up the loot. Perhaps you can pay for the rooms out of pocket with the money you uh, picked up from the bandits. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, actually, Tony, give me a uh, perception. Oh, my wonderful perception. <laughs> <laughs> Minus one. <laughs> uh, what money? <laughs> well, he did mention the money. I'm not Fif forgetful. Yeah, 15 gold pieces. Right, exactly. But uh, he can pay out of the or 15 is what I'm saying. Uh, all right. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's going to be two gold pieces for the rooms for the night. All right. Um, if you want to take both of the rooms. Yeah, each room I, has I three beds. A discount if we don't ask for bed sheets. Oh, what said, kind of establishment do you think we're running here? I I, uh, I tell him I tell uh, that Sir Clancy Pants should, should can take that fifteen and pay for all of our expenses out of that. That way, we know he's not cheating us in any way, and think myself very clever. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, after we get our rooms and settle in. Mm hmm. Uh, I I go talk to the innkeeper, okay, and and tell them um tell them that I've uh I get in conversation with them and uh and uh and say that I've heard that a famous gnomish bard is coming, has has just arrived in the city and may may grace this inn with their presence. A famous gnome, you say? No such thing. D'Artagnan Silverblade. You would not believe. He's known across Cambria. Surely you've heard of D'Artagnan Silverblade. Never so, been one for the entertainments, but I suppose it can't hurt. I assure you, good sir, I, I was was thrilled to thrilled to meet him and and convinced him to come over here and and play for the patrons of the fine leaping pike. I suppose it might not be a bad idea at that. Of course, I won't go wasting any money. Sir, if but you if he wants to earn a few coin, mm -hmm. well, I'm sure the patrons will pay whatever they think he's worth. Sir, I have no I'm objection to a man putting a hat out. Uh, sir, I suspect that with his abilities, they'll be throwing coins before long. I think that's a very fair offer. And other things, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> How much can I sell this chair for? <laughs> uh, has has uh, D'Artagnan Silverblade arrived yet? I don't know. I'm waiting for a response on the terrible extra work that I'm making the GM do. Oh, oh okay. Um, at the other place, I'm like I have my hat out and I'm talking with a consent. Okay. Um. Oh, all right. That was a bust. Yeah. All right. Do you make any money? Uh, try something to do what? Playing? Yeah. I'll play a quick song, and then I'll run back over to the shitty place. Uh, or rather, Rollo Padfoot, the halfling thief, will run over to the shitty place. <laughs> <laughs> um, you make a few silvers. I'm amounting to about a gold piece in total. All right, I'm rich. I'm retiring. 
Um, when I come over, is he dressed differently or something? When he comes back? Uh, nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. Um, come in the back door and look around furtively. <laughs> Uh, they can arrange uh, for circling spins. They can arrange that. Um, Tor the arranged marriage is not only legal; it's fairly common amongst the wealthy uh, as a way to forge alliances between families. Um, nobody seems terribly familiar with this girl. Is it common for? Uh... Uh, I guess we were too stupid to ask who she was getting married to. We'll find out tomorrow. We'll ask. Okay. Um, but yeah, but the, like I said, it, this sort of marriage happens a lot, mostly amongst the wealthy or politically important. Um, so is there anything else that the, you're going to... Um, when D'Artagnan Silverblade arrives, I will tell them that I will tell them that they're prepared for the great bard, D'Artagnan Silverblade, the great Nomish bard. Uh, I will do my best to impersonate this uh, so-called D'Artagnan silver blade and put out my hat. <laughs> okay. When he starts playing, I, I first to leap into applause. Well, let's see how he plays first. Is there a role that I have to make for playing for money, or do I just take ten no. or something? No. Okay. Yeah, you can effectively just take 10 because you're not doing anything particularly, yeah. Uh... The hell was that? My song. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> How much time did you spend writing these? I'm curious. <laughs> A couple minutes on my phone while I was waiting for Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> You can always just Google bad song lyrics as well. Okay. Um, other than other than the bard entertaining the the crowds, is anybody else going to do anything? I'm going to try to drum up interest in the bard, and I'll make a big show of putting all kinds of coins in his hats, which is actually like three coppers. But nobody what, can what see What time that. of day is it? Um, it's now on towards evening. All right. I'm going to have a very heavy meal and then go to bed. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to have a meal from our from our. Uh, okay, the food the food funds. here is is uh, a baked pike, and it's it's fairly standard fare for the region, but it's good, satisfying food. Okay. Um. Okay, so you and you're going to head up to bed. Yeah. Okay. Is anybody else going to do anything particular? I'm like I said. I'm just trying to drum up interest in the bard and. Okay. Uh, I'll be like doing a. Uh, in in between in between songs, I'll see if I can learn anything more appropriate here with uh, Streetwise and Bluff, if necessary. Okay. Um, the reason the inn just disappeared. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I just changed the visibility here, but. Um, Seeing as how I'm two feet away from Rolo Padfoot, do I hear the questions he's asking? Um, yeah. You can hear him talking to some of the other patrons. By the way, as they're talking, I'm also talking to uh, the patrons in conversations where I'll play up our exploits. Okay, well, um, you basically... Uh it's sort of odd that there's this bandit attack, which seems to be the talk of the town now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's unusual for bandit attacks to occur this close to town. Mm -hmm. But nobody seems to know much about it. Uh, dur during one of the breaks in the action, I'll tell the others what I learned at the other place, that the most of the local crime is uh, being run by the Beggar's Guild, and they would never have a hand in an attack like this. So obviously it was a targeted, it was a targeted attempt. Well, not only would they not have a hand in it, but they wouldn't... By, by making an attack like that, you'd be pretty much bringing down their wrath on yourself. Yeah, so... yeah, This Which means was, somebody this probably has it, has it particularly in for these, this, these, these people. You know what that means? 
Yes, we're going to have lots of excitement on this trip. Whoever's after this princess will probably pay a lot for her. Oh dear. What's the Sir Clancy Pants' character's actual name? Not that we're going to use it, but... Lucan. Lucan? Yeah. Courtesy Lucan. of the D&D &D name generator. Yeah, so nobody really nobody really seems to know much about it, but like I said, there's there's quite a bit of talk about it. Um but also they killed two cavern guard tavern guards and that ah, caravan guards. I can't even talk. They killed two caravan guards and normally bandits try to make a point of not killing people. Uh -huh. Um it's easier just to rob them and the town guards less likely to be overly zealous in hunting you down for robbery than they are for murder. Yes, so this was probably not a robbery attempt. Uh, anyway, tomorrow morning we're going to have to ask some questions. Tor says this aloud. We're going to have to ask some questions of uh, the old man whose name I've forgotten. Um, Arlen. Arlen. As we, we need to make sure we know all sides of this before we head into it. Clearly, someone doesn't want this to happen, and it's not just someone who saw a pretty card on the road. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, Rollo, I think you're on to something. So, I don't learn any additional stuff by uh, streetwising around this, obviously, lower-class tavern. Uh, no, no. No one in town knows. Okay. Yeah, um, they, they seem to be awfully surprised by it in general. You say lower-class. I prefer to use the term unpretentious. <laughs> okay, so you guys... Uh, do we? Does he manage? To, do we manage to scrounge up some coin from his uh, his playing? And well, I might. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, you uh, basically everybody at this point give me a perception roll. Oh yeah! Oh yeah, baby! I wish I knew what my perception I have modifier was. My perception, my, what's your uh, wisdom? Eight. Minus one. <laughs> my perception is also equally mugwumpian. Oh, yeah. We see everything that happens. Okay. <laughs> Nothing I just need by one from, us. Uh, from Lucan. I'll roll Lucan's. Oh, he's here. It's plus nine, so he sees everything. Uh, okay. Um, actually, uh, basically nothing else of interest happens. Um, the rest of you eventually go upstairs, uh, and go to sleep. Um, Lucan has already done so. Nap time. Okay. Um, Lucan, in the middle of the night... You awaken to the sound of the door to your room opening. Hey, that's my room, too. Damn it, why didn't I choose the room with the guy with Sean? the high perception? Yep. Yeah. I, um, I look, look over there and say, okay. it's occupied. Okay. Um, you see a man standing in the doorway, uh, armed with a short sword. I like how you take your bow to bed. Very, very good of you. Very, <laughs> <gosh>. <laughs> All right. I, uh, yeah, I, like, I yell out, it's occupied. So, okay. Your pants don't decide me. She should probably wake up. <laughs> okay. Turn around. Everybody give me an initiative roll. Does that include us? Yep. Okay, so. Tell me what you got. Uh, Grand, what did you roll? 20. Uh, and Sir Clancy Pants? An 18? Yeah, sorry, I'm just having something to eat. Oh, uh, that's okay. Uh, Tor? Two. Two. And PowerPoint? Seven. Seven, okay. Okay, um... Sir Clancy Pants, you yell, 
and you can take an action. Uh, now you can take uh, one action. On top so of the standard yelling? Action. Yeah. In other words, you can. Okay. Uh, yeah. You can take a yelling. So basically, a free action. Okay. Um. um <coughs> I'm assuming. So you can take either move or a standard action, but not both. All right. I'm, I'm going recommending to, uh, the. Yeah. You're I'm recommending what? To, uh, yeah. I, what are you I, recommending? Picking up your weapon. <laughs> well, I'm going to get up too, so I'm not prone. So I'm going to sit up and pick up my weapon if it's close by. And I'm assuming okay. that's a standard action to pick up a weapon. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, the, to to stand up is a, is a move action. Um, yeah. So you you basically stand up and grab your weapon. Cool. Okay. Um, the guy in the doorway is going to throw a dagger at you. That sounds familiar. It's Darian Nightthorn. I disbelieve. Okay. Uh, you must have worked because he misses you. <laughs> okay. He's from the League of Incompetent Assassins, apparently. Right, there we go. Are okay. we hearing this in the next room, by the way? Yes, everybody hears a what? scream or a yell. And um, I will... And let me just reveal this area here. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Tor looks unconcerned. Okay, and this is what you see, and Grunt. It's your turn. Then these are full turns now. So picking up a weapon or a shield. Picking is an up a weapon is a minor a is a minor action. Um, getting up is going to be a move action. So I can do both of those and then take a standard action as well. No, you can take a yeah yes you can move uh, pick up a weapon and do something. Uh, I will uh, uh, get up, arm myself, and. Uh, what is this guy anyway? Is he a half orc or human? What does he look like? He's human. Okay, uh, and then I will, uh, and then I will insult him. Get the hell out of my room, you damn dirty gnome! <laughs> okay, go ahead and give me a roll. Ah, why am I so bad at this? They tend not to have a very high will. Um. Yeah, but I keep rolling either like. Uh, piddling failures or maximum. Yeah, okay. Well, he does not seem uh, overly concerned with your insult. So, Sir Clancy Pants, you are up and armed, so you can move and act normally. Hello? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to chew in your ears. Oh. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to twin strike that guy, and I'm going to Hunter's Mark him first. Okay. You're going like to fire that. both shots at him? Yeah, right in the face. You got it. Okay. Um, that's going to hit. And that one doesn't. So that's all right. Okay. And then it's a... I think it's just a D12. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just a D12. So, Bam! I'm going to be six. Okay. You graze him on the cheek. He takes another D6. Oh, yeah. he takes another D6. Yes, go ahead and roll that. Bam. And then I say, <laughs> <laughs> and I run behind him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay um, the retreating ranger is alive and well. You know, Technically, we're not supposed to see the health bars. That's just a GURPS thing. No, but it, I, I am putting it up because it gives you an indication of how wounded they are. Because even if you couldn't see their health bars, I mean, you, you would be able to tell whether when they're, they're bloodied. Thing and, yeah. Um, so for simplicity's sake, I'm, I'm doing that. Okay. So 
Let's see. I assume we don't get armor bonuses because we're not sleeping in our armor. Correct. Okay, um, Tor, this guy is going to swing at you. Um, they're all, they all appear to be carrying short swords. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, but... Miss. He's still going to miss you because <laughs> they're just that good. Okay. Um, this guy is going to move to here and take a swing at <laughs> as her clancy pants and predictably miss. Hey, can this I now move? Gonna... Can I now move uh, Sir Clancy Pants out of the building by one square? <laughs> Is that a window or a door? That's a window. Oh, yeah. Just ship them right out the window. Okay. And um, Grand is unfortunately going to get hit. No. For six points of damage. Ah, that's okay, though. So you want to go ahead and mark that off? Yeah, I just want to see if I want to use my... Uh... If I want to use fade away, I can't remember if this is like. I guess this is an encounter power. It's hard to tell, really. Yeah, it's an encounter powder. Uh, I guess I'll encounter power. I'll fade, use fade away, and I take six damage. You take six damage, and disappear. Okay, and the the last guy is going to attack a uh, PowerPoint. And is going to hit. Ow! For eight points of damage. Uh, okay, that's really bad. Can you mark that on me? Uh, sure. And it's your turn. Um, okay, I will. Uh, now, can I can't move and attack, right? Uh, you're basically prone, so you can use a move action to get up. Um, you sure. can attack. You can you could draw use a miner to draw a weapon and I'm not drawing weapon. I don't need weapons. Okay, well uh, regardless. You can attack, you just can't yeah, go yeah. anywhere. Okay, I will curse the guy uh uh who just hit me. Okay. Um and then I will use echoing dirge to attack both of them. Okay. Uh unfortunately so. I don't get any bonus my fun bonuses because of <coughs> how this it how this it, uh, the situation the cramped quarters here. But I will uh, I will roll d20 first on the guy uh, who attacked uh, Tor. Okay. That's against Will. Uh, is that a hit? Um, this is a close blast, so I can attack both of them, by the way. Close blast. Okay, so wait, yeah. what do you roll here? Uh, 15 against Will. Against Will? Uh, that's yep. going to hit? It's actually up to a 19 with, a, with my okay. charisma, right? So go ahead and okay. give me some damage. I see Sir Clancy Pants took no damage whatsoever. Uh, he was missed wildly, as usual. Um, by the way, did, did, I take damage? So, did I take damage because I assume I'm not wearing any mail? Okay, sorry. Yes. Okay, uh, that does nine to that one, and I will shift him two squares. Okay. Which I can do with Echoing Dirge. Okay. Uh, uh, so I can't grab him. You're going to have to grab him. I'm right. going to move him down two squares down and one to the left. To the here? One. Yep. Okay. Um, and then I attack the other one. I'll add in my bonus this time. Is that hit or not? Um, and this is first Will. Mm -hmm. That will hit. I love attacking Will. Well, will is kind of a douchebag. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody likes Will. Uh, Eight points. Yep. And then I will shift him two squares. I'm going to just shift him one down and one out the door to the left. Yep. Right there. Okay. Yes. Now, can I shift, or is that because I was prone? I can't even do that. No, you, your movement was to get up, basically. Okay, gotcha. Ah! Okay. 
Okay. That was, that's my action is using that power. Okay. Uh, then that will make it Tor's turn. Can I charge over? Oh, no, I need two squares away to charge. Uh, okay, as a free action, I'm going to use Storm Bond, and my sword appears in my hand. Um, uh, then I'm going to use Aegis of Shielding on the bandit that is closest to me. This guy? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then what is the range on you? Close person one, that's no good. Uh, I'm lying down still. Yep. I stand up. Okay. Uh, that's a movement. So you can still take a standard action. No, I can't. As okay. I have no ranged abilities. Oh, okay. Oh, don't. Should have <laughs> next to you. <laughs> okay. Yes, you should have. <laughs> should have left that one guy there. Okay. I'll take a wait. If they step in range, I'll attack. Okay. Um... Jesus Christ, what do we do? Okay. <laughs> I told you the bandits were the good guys. Ah! Oh, some guy with two swords. He should be easy. Um, actually, you're not certain, but you think it's a woman. Does her name end in A? Um, and she is firing at Tor with a crossbow, and she's going to hit you. Mm, she's going to match my armor class, so I think that's a hit, right? Uh, well, so remember, you're not wearing armor. Yes, without armor, I have 17 AC. Okay, so that's still going to hit you, though. So, and she's going to hit you for six points of damage. Thank you. Is she really carrying two swords as well as a crossbow, or just say No, no. Uh, crossbow and a short sword. Okay. Um, and that's going to make it Gron's turn. Protect me, Gron. Uh, okay, so I've got four movements. So first, and I'm invisible. Oh, yeah, I'm just leaving me there by myself. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm coming back. <laughs> If I run out this three spaces here, just tell me what I see so I can decide what to do next. Okay. If I run there, I want to get a look out in the hallway. I see this guy, and I don't know if I see anyone else down here. Um, so, there's not a, so there's not a huge team of dudes here. Nope. Okay. Uh, what are what are police called in this uh, time period? Are they aldermen? Or are they uh, um, the fuck is? Uh, it's just watchmen. Okay. So I'll take my last point of movement. Step back in here, and then as a minor action, I'll ghost sound from down in this area. Okay. Uh. A bunch of running boots clanking and some and people saying, "Freeze, Alderman! Throw down your weapons." Okay. And uh, just because I hope to delay these guys a little bit, and then I'm going to guiding strike that asshole. Okay. Uh, which the guy right in front of you? Yeah, the only one I can hit after running that far. Okay, go ahead. Uh, or yeah, a crit. that's gonna hit. <laughs> uh, it's not a crit because I got plus five. On so, that. Actually, actually, I should get plus eight on that. I'll, I'll modify the macro later. Well, regardless, you hit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I'll do a shitty amount okay. of damage, and uh, I guess I'm gonna lower his armor class by two until the end of my next turn. Okay. I mean, now that I see it, there's more than my hoping that a sound from down in the south is gonna is gonna fuck with them. Right. Okay. Um, and that's gonna make it Sir Clancy Pants' turn. Uh, your right. gnomish friend has now abandoned you. No, I, 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 I,
and reappeared right. behind them. Um, this is now, a window, right? Yes. Okay. Is it glass? Yes, it is. What level of the building are we on? We're on the. You're on the second floor. All right. Tink, tink, and, tink. Uh, moving through enemy spaces is only possible using air acrobatics, or is that even possible in fourth ed? Um, moving through an enemy space, I think yeah. you have to make a, a, an acrobatics or athletics check. All right. And it still provokes and, uh, opportunity tech. Oh. Now, just just for reference, um, because your gnomish friend is over there, if you were in this space, you do get combat advantage against the, that guy that the gnome just hit. With my bow? With that You I'm can gonna... use your bow in his face. You just take an opportunity attack. Right. All right. Well, if you, yeah. And you can... Well, then, then well, well no, you... Here. Wait a minute. You, yeah. Okay. So you no, shifting well, doesn't... Like provoke any opportunities so and fine on that. you said combat advantage was plus two but I thought it was roll 2d20s and take the better result um, hold on a second I want that one that one sounds better Uh, wait. Uh, it says plus two to attack roll. Yeah, it's plus two to your attack roll. All right. Then I'm going to use Sure Strike on this jerk base. Okay. Now, he also has minus two to his AC, thanks to your buddy there. I plus understand flanking. that. Plus flanking. Plus your flanking says so plus two also. So, so go ahead and give me a roll. Yeah, you're going to hit him. <laughs> Thank God for bonuses. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then that would be 3d12. Bam. Okay. And then, Oh, wait, no, sorry. And then we're going to add two more d12 to that. I did that all wrong. Bam and bam. So, uh... 22, 28 points of damage in his face. 28 points of damage? Okay, he notices yeah. that. Wait, read the read the stuff. What's the... Uh, the Are you the, keeping the six? No, I'm not going to keep the six. <laughs> Should have kept the six. <laughs> yeah, but whatever. Give him back four points. Yeah. <laughs> I just uh, don't want him to notice it. So, um, and there are any secondary effects of that power? No. Um, it's just a straight damage power. Dex, uh, dexterity modifier damage. So, yeah, no, no nothing. Okay. Uh, uh, well, you basically plug this guy. No, the damage is wrong. Look is at it? this. It's dexterity modifier on your damage. Did is you it are... for dice roll? Uh, probably just... not. You're right. Yeah, okay, yeah. you're right. Okay, so... Uh, you screwed that guy up pretty good, nonetheless. Yeah, he's definitely bloodied. All right. Okay. So... This guy... Being rather peeved going to run up to here. Actually, no, I'm sorry, he can't, because he'll provoke opportunity. So he's going to well, go... provoke an opportunity, yeah, as soon as he gets there. Yeah, so he's going to here. Is that a provoke? No, no, if he moves one more, it would be a provoke. But he's in melee range, so... So he moves into melee range, and he's going to... 17 hit? Uh, yes, it will. No, he's not going to do much then. Um, so he's going to take... All right. Uh, he's going to take seven damage. Okay. And he's going to take uh, the... Oh, I don't have a minor left. Never mind. Sorry. Please continue. Okay. Okay. And he's going to swing at... Excelsior. And... Uh, I may die in this combat. <laughs> 
hey, the player's getting hit. So you were going to uh, take the D8 plus one. a whopping ah. two points of damage. Damn you. Who did I mark? I forget. I think it might be that guy. Yeah, it's that guy. So does he hit with a minus two? Uh, oh, let me go look at your... Yeah, he probably I'm does, because I'm not wearing my armor, so I'm only armor class uh, 14. Yep. Oh. Okay. The other guy, short sword guy? this guy? This guy here is going to try to attack Lucan. Who the fuck is Lucan? <laughs> and misses horribly again. Yes, I am invincible. It certainly looks that way. So no one's falling for this Watchman deal. Uh, they don't appear to be actually. Damn it! Just for the record, we're getting a refund. <laughs> um, let's see what's now. Apparently, you can drag people around in the initiative order, even when you don't want to. Come for the pike, stay for the assassins. Okay, so this guy is going to step through the doorway to here, and he's going to attack Tor. And that's not going to hit you. So the remaining guy is also going to attack Sir Clancy Pants. And this guy, for once, does not miss. Yeah, nice. So you're going to take a whopping four points of damage. Okay. I choose to disbelieve. You hear the... Most blood curdling cry you've ever heard an elf scream out in your life, <laughs> but it's but it's not like super like scary. It's like eh, <laughs> he hit me. Exactly. That makes it Excelsior's turn. Yes, I will shift here and use echoing dirge again, and I will curse the other one first. Of the other two, of the two that wasn't cursed, because they're equal distance, I can choose to curse. Right. The other so you're going to curse so, which one? Ping, ping the one you're going to... Uh, they're, they're both cursed. It doesn't oh, matter, yeah. they're both right. cursed now. Uh, and then attack, do my Echoing Dirge attack on both of them. Okay. Go ahead and give me some rolls. First the one on the left. Sorry. It's dark, I can't see my keyboard. Against Will. You're against Will. Uh, that's going to hit. Okay. So that'll do that much. Oh, nice. 14. Okay. And the other guy, we're going to give me a roll to hit. And by the way, we're going to send him two squares backwards. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That would be a crit. So um, you're just basically going to do max damage. Uh, so max damage is 16. Uh, ouch. Okay, he's bloodied. Uh, and we'll send him two squares down and to the left, out the door. Or, or yeah, that's possible. Okay. Uh, how come the other one, was the other one not hurt that I just hit? It doesn't look like you did the damage on him, because he was hurt before. Look at the... No, he's, he's damaged. No, it's not no. look at the chat. No. You took 14 off me instead of the bad guy. You. How did it... Um... He hit him for 14 damage, and you just misclicked and took the HP off me. I've already put it back, but you need to okay. take 14 off the bandit. It, just the way these tokens <laughs> are too close to each other, it's kind of hard to click on one. Um... GM is trying to kill us with his sneaky clicks. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I see why Howard's constantly okay. moving tokens off all over the place now. That power is pretty good, actually. Yeah, that's really not bad. Tor. Now Tor can get himself between me and the bad guys. I mean, Tor can be valiantly heroic. <laughs> Tor will move here. He will activate Lashing Asp. 
Okay, now um, just be aware if if you move out from this square to that one, you'll provoke an opportunity attack. Do it up. Okay. She's got a bow. I'm not aware that she can. She had a bow and a okay. mace. Yep. You're, she, she yeah, but she's no, but she used the crossbow, so she doesn't have the mace. Clip. So yeah, you're right. She does not attack. She's not get an opportunity. Uh, so I move there and I activate lashing asp, and then I activate sword burst, which is three. Uh, this is plus four. Okay. So that's 20 on... I'll start from left to right. Yep. 20, 17. Uh, these are your two hit rolls? Yes. Okay, so you hit, you hit. Oops. And you don't hit. Okay, the first... The first guy takes... Wait a minute, this is against what? AC. And it's plus what? Four. It'll Four. be... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they, yes, so the first yeah. two hit. Okay, so go ahead and roll the first one. Oh, like it okay, matters. this is going to get... Well, the first one is taking a lot of damage, so he might be dead. Like, you, well, he's I got don't... five hit points, so... <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. 1d6 plus 4. So he's dead. So he's dead. So he takes 8. Um, and then the guy beside him, directly in front of me, takes 4 damage prior to my hitting him. Okay. That's slashing ass. Uh, and then I hit him for 1d6 plus 8. Plus 8, yes. So he takes 9 damage. Okay, so a total of uh, 13? No, a total of 9 damage. I added it in. Oh, oh you did. Oh, okay, so he takes a total of 9, so right. And the chick beside me takes 4. Okay, she was missed, but she no. still takes 4. No, 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 it's lashing ass. Yeah. So, yeah, she only takes 4 damage. Okay. Uh, so you finish. And as my out. minor, I will mark uh, her instead of the guy who's there. Okay. Okay. Well, then, uh, in response to that, she is going to draw a sword and take a swing at you, and. Let me just see what we got here. Okay. Uh, she's going to hit you. And you are going to take... Uh, 15 points of damage. Ah! And... Okay. And it's Gron's turn. Can I strike me, Gron? I can't see her from where I am, can I? No, she's right here. Shit. So there's a whole section of wall between you and... and... As much as I dislike elves, I guess I can't really abandon him. All right, so uh, I will slide over here. Okay, you're going to shift? Yeah, I'm shifting over there, and then uh, I'm going to... Uh, smack this dude again with... Now, I can do this and then use an action to attack the other guy as well. Assuming the first guy dies. Wait a minute, you're doing what? Oh, so I want to hit this guy who's almost dead with a guiding strike, and then can I use my action point to hit the other guy with a guiding strike? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, I will first attempt to hit this guy with a guiding strike. Okay. The guy, clo the guy who's wounded? Yep. I believe in you. Go ahead. Uh, that's going to hit... Yay. Okay. Keep him on minus two to AC. Yeah, uh, that's an issue. Yeah, it's really he's, not. He's on. He's per permanent minus two to AC. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I'm gonna use whatever my freaking action is to abandon everyone. Oh, I guess I'll hit this guy as well. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, is that your total sixteen? Yep. Okay, uh, that's going to hit. This and, time only for 10. Yeah, and he's minus 2 his AC as well. And now I believe he's flanked. Uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, if he's not, then yes. I'll shift one over as well. But I assume that he is since I can draw a line between us. Uh, yeah, no, you go to have to shift one in order to flank him. All right, I'll, yeah, okay, I'll do that. You're going to shift to there. 
Okay. Uh, and that makes it Sir Clancy Pants. All right. I'm just going to use twin strikes on this jerk face. Uh, is okay. that a ranged attack? It is a ranged yeah. attack, so it will provoke an opportunity attack. But if I run away, it's going to provoke an opportunity attack anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yep, pretty much. So, okay. Uh, he does not hit you. <laughs> Sir Clancy Pants is invulnerable. <laughs> All right. So it's uh, plus two to attack as well, right? Because of uh, the flank? Yes. yes. Cool. And he's minus so two AC. Be... Yep. So, oh man. So that's really, it's plus four? Or so well, just, be just add plus... the plus two. All right. Okay. So that'd be. Uh, so first attack. Uh, yes, that hits. And second attack. That also hits. All right, sure. so, <laughs> so first attack for damage. Uh, it's just a straight to D12. D12 plus okay. a D6 because screw that guy. So that's 10 for the first attack. Mm -hmm. And then another four. So 14 total? Yeah. Okay, he's bloodied. I don't know if you can take him. Okay. Um. For close these close uh, close blast attack, do you need um, line of sight? Uh, what? Which? T um, I think you do. Well, what is it? No, what? Is, what attack is it? Close blast, echoing dirge, is, close blast three. Is it one person in the blast, or is it everybody in the blast kind of a thing? Uh, it's pick two targets in the blast area. Then you have to have a line of sight to, to them. God damn it. Okay. Um, yeah. So. What the? What's the matter? Uh, I have 24 HP somehow. Yeah, hey, you got uh, hit. You gave him. You gave him back more health. I don't know how I got any health back. Okay. Well, the guy in front of you is going to move and provoke an opportunity attack. Wait. Have they? Tor. Oh. So. Eleven. Eleven. You do not hit him, and he goes crashing through the window. Okay. Um. Let's see. This guy mm -hmm. is going to attack. Sir Clancy Pants. No, he's not. Oh my gosh, he actually hits you. That's the first time for everything. Oh, wow. And does he hit you? He hits you for nine oh, points of damage. Oh, 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 medic. Medic. Uh, so. That makes it, uh, Tony Stern. Uh,. So, uh, I guess I will att just attack this chick. Now, it, Shadow Walk, I've got to move three squares. I can't move back and forth. It's got to be three from the maximum. Right. You can't cha cha into it. Cha cha into it. Okay, so I'm not. You set us in these small rooms, so I cannot Shadow Walk. Um, that was my whole plan. Yeah. So, just, weeks coming up with that. I'll just be over here, and I guess I'll use my dreadful word on her. I'll spend a plus one to hit, since one of the cursed ones just died, died off my pack boon. Okay. So this is for dreadful word. So this is off will. Ah! Uh, this wasted okay. encounter power by rolling a one. <laughs> she scoffs at you. Balls! Okay, Tor. I will shift to here. 
I'll mm-hmm. try to shift to here. Um, I will attack with Booming Blade. Mm-hmm. That'll be a 17 AC. You miss. Okay, I will take my action point. I'll spend my take my healing surge. I'll be up to 19 HP. Okay. She is my Aegis. Okay. Go ahead. So that makes it her turn. And she is going to swing at you. Hit. And yes, is going to hit you for five points of damage. And it's Gron's turn. Uh, I guess I, uh, I would really like to move to engage her this turn, but I guess I really can't. Uh, I can attack, then move, right? Yes. Okay, I'm going to Guiding Strike this dude and hope that I kill him. He's at minus two to AC still from the last one. Mm-hmm. Oh, and he's flanked. Yeah. So that's an 11, which probably is going to miss anyway, because I rolled a fucking one. Yes, and that is going to miss. Yay me. <coughs> oh, actually, no, I'm ticked off because... So, Tor, you missed this chick? Well, yeah. Uh, and Sir Clancy Pants. All right. Okay, now you have combat advantage on this guy. I'm going to shoot him. Okay. Actually, no. Hold on. Let me think about this. Two, three. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to invoke the attack of opportunity. So okay. You go ahead and then ro- roll that. Okay. And what's your you AC? Fif- without- 15 with Dex. Okay, yeah. He misses you. One, two, three, four, five. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to twin strike. One shot on Jerkface McGee up here. Mm-hmm. And one shot on her. Okay, go ahead. So the first shot. On the, the guy up north? Yeah. Is... Uh, it's just a D20 plus 7 now. Did I hit? Uh, no, that does not hit him. Then I will use my Elven ability to re-roll that. Go ahead. I think that's a hit. I hit. Uh, that's a hit. Uh, a I think I killed hit. her. <laughs> uh, it's a D12 plus a D6, so... Yeah, he's got 16 minimum. Points, so. Yeah. So yeah, he's dead. And then on the second one, I miss. Meow. Okay. And then I'm going to use an action point. Go ahead. And I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to use Hunter Quarry on her, and then I'm going to use two fan two fang strike. Okay, go ahead. So two fang strike is. So, bam. Okay, yes, that will hit. And it's two attacks. So on the so, second attack... That does not hit. Okay. It's a D12 plus 5. Yep. There you uh, go. Wow. So... And I don't get Hunter's Quarry until the next turn because it's one per... On one per turn, I think it is. You only use it once per turn, yes. Yeah. Okay. But now it's now it's on her, so. Yes. Okay. I'm helping. <laughs> Quite a bit, actually. Okay, it is Tony's turn. Um. <coughs> Okay, I will do just a sad little echoing dirge just on her. I'm cursing her first. Okay. Um, Miss again! (laughs) Okay. Poor. The dice have gone very bad. Booming blade. Nope. Oof. 
That was actually okay. a seven, not a three, but it's still a miss. Okay. And what's your AC again? Mine's 17 right now. Oh, yeah, she hits you. Uh, for six points. Healing surge. He did that already, actually. <laughs> and that's going to make it Gron's turn. Play a tune. All right, I can move five down to there. And mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, attempt a stirring shout. Okay. Go ahead and give me a roll. Uh, okay, that's going to hit. Yeah, let's all hit her. Get healthy. <laughs> yeah, hit, yeah. Uh, drop your weapon so I can get some healing too. We'll kill her really slowly. Okay, Sir Clancy Pants. Um, I'm going to. Can I hold my action and if I and if she hits Tor, I can shoot at her or? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do exactly that. Okay. Uh, this guy's gone. So, uh, Tony. Sure. Oh, it's oh, it's me first. Oh, uh, I will. Uh, I'm gonna try my silly. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll just try my silly will attack again on her. Something okay. low damage. What? Something low damage, so everyone can hit her a lot. It is. It it is a low damage attack. Ah. Uh, Okay, that's gonna hit. Tony is hit something. I, I've, I cursed her before, so I can't really do very much low damage. Ah, but there you go, snake eyes. Okay. <laughs> uh, give me five hit points. Yay. Okay. That was a very stirring shout. And. And Tor. 25. Uh, yeah, that's going to hit. Five damage. <laughs> like vampiric attack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everyone's like, <laughs> who wants the last one? <laughs> okay. Oh, no, she's dead. Uh, I still have Lashing Asp up. She takes an additional... Oh, it's another four? Yeah. yeah. I was laughing because she had six hit points. You hit her Damn with five. <laughs> okay. Uh, Is she, she dead expires. or unconscious? No, she's dead. Does anyone have first aid? <laughs> I can threaten her. Get back up here! Okay. Um... So what they're all either it? dead or disappeared. Uh, I run to the window and see if I can see see the guy out the window over here. Uh, you do not see him. Why am I not surprised? But I see a little trail of blood heading off down the street. Exactly. Oh, wait. Without without my armor, I have healing skill of one. Maybe I can try a stabilizer. I have a healing skill of two. I can okay, try to go. assist you. I want a uh, stabilizer so I can uh, question her. So 12. Uh, okay, you do not successfully bring her back from the dead. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, in that case. Wait, I'll use bluff. Um, You're not actually dead. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Well, sure it's hard to get any sleep in this inn. <laughs> what time of night is it? Um, it's actually not too. I mean, it's it's, it's sort of the middle of the night. Okay. How did um, Tor get all his health back? Did you use more healing surges? Uh, yeah. How hey, else? Um, <laughs> if you want to wait, uh, I can do a, a ritual that gives you an extra plus five on your healing surge use after a combat. The beauty of it being the middle of the night is we can just go back to bed. 
<laughs> I'm gonna use two healing surges and I uh, search the body of the lady in front of me. Okay. Yes. Well. Okay. Um, she has a short sword and a crossbow and uh, eleven quarrels. Um, How about all these? Nothing else on her. Um, what race is she? Human. Does the short sword or crossbow look special in any way, or they just look like normal run-of-the-mill stuff? Um, they look to be pretty good quality, but nothing truly exceptional. Um, how about these guys? Are these guys also? Um, Tor, make it a, a, a perception roll for me. Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> um... The rest Those of the right. the rest of them, uh, each of them has a short sword and a dagger, and between the two of but between the lot of them, they have four gold pieces. Aha! Four that puts us up to nineteen. Don't think I'm not counting there, Sir Clancy Pants. Yeah, okay. yeah, totally. I guess we can use that uh, that four to help pay for the end. Now one of them is, is is dead. The other two are clearly dying. Mm-hmm. Um, and the uh, and the woman is dead. Obviously. Oh, uh, well then I'm gonna go to one of them who's dying and and uh, and start interrogating him. I can say. Okay, you. they're not conscious. <laughs> can I wake one of them I up? Will, uh... You can try a healing roll if you want. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> down to well. the end, to the to the main floor. Yeah, you can hear people beginning to stir down there. Yeah, I'm gonna knock on this door here. Okay. Uh, after a moment, the door opens and you see a very weary-looking man. Um, What's going on? I'll just say sorry to disturb you, sir. My mistake, and I'll knock on this door. I'll, I'm checking to see if they're alive. I won't bother wasting your time. Okay. Uh, no, nobody else. Everybody else seems to be fine. I'm using a healing surge, by the way. Go ahead. Uh, Take your healing surge value back in. Uh, How do I do that? Add it. Uh, Whatever your healing surge is, you just get that many hit points. Just click on your token and then click on the the red circle. Type in the number of, you know, the new number and then hit enter. And minus one healing surge from your total. Yep. Oh, and where do the healing surges get? They, uh, it'll say uh, wherever you've got your character sheet or whatever, it'll tell you how many you get per day. And no, I'm just saying, oh, oh, clicking on my sheet. Oh, I thought there was some token we had tracked here. Okay. Um, yeah, so should we uh, see if uh, anyone heard anything? Okay, well, they heard the guy crash through the window, and that seems to have woken up the, the innkeeper and his wife. Let's go talk um, to the innkeeper. But and while well, they're coming up the stairs, trying to find out what's going on, and they're stunned to see the dead bodies in the hallway. I didn't do what it. What happened here? Um. Apparently, security is not too great here at the Leaping Pike. Intruders. Security. It's an inn, man. It's not a castle. <laughs> Did you? Did you or your wife hear anything? These uh, the sound of, of broken and attacked us. We hear the sound of this window breaking. That was what? one of them leaping out the window. Is there anyone in your downstairs still in your inn? Uh, no, just the other guests. There's a few people sleeping in the common room, but okay. would you be so kind as to send someone to alert the guard? Uh, someone's already been dispatched. Perfect. I'm going to go downstairs and see if anyone noticed these gentlemen coming in. Uh, okay. Uh, no one did. Um, everyone make a perception check for me. I see nothing. Call me Mugwump. Um, oh, I should, that should have been a minus one. I was actually a four. Okay. One by no, you, okay. You noticed nothing out of the ordinary. 
They must have teleported in somehow. Are the uh, the two unconscious ones able to be woken up? Uh, if anybody wants to try and make a healing check. Best I not try that. <laughs> My healing skill is minus one. I can try healing. Go ahead and make it. Aha. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, you can actually bring one of them to consciousness. Wake up. Wake up. Where's your where's your money? Okay. Money. Money. Say, who sent you? Don't make me torment you into the afterlife. Oh, is... <laughs> Go ahead and give me an intimidate roll. I threaten him with all sorts of evil spells and curses which will follow him into the great beyond. Okay. Uh, he seems genuinely terrified. So do I. I'm That's going back to bed. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. What are you asking him now? Who sent you? The guild mistress. The town guild mistress? The what? Which guild mistress? Sorry. Um, uh, who, who is the guild mistress? Which guild? Which guild? The night kid. Can I streetwise that? Uh, yes, you can, actually. Go ahead. Okay, uh, yeah, you know of that. It's uh, sort of an assassin's guild. An out-of-town assassin's guild, probably. Uh, yes, yeah. This is not the sort of place that has, a, you know, an assassin's guild. Um, not that there are all that many places that do, but, but you, you've heard of them. When were you hired? This day. Not surprised. They, they they sent us to to kill the travelers in the last two rooms, and <laughs> to find a box. What? You went to the wrong rooms. If you're looking in the wrong hotel, actually. <laughs> what kind of? I, bo- I don't know. They said we we were to retrieve a decorative box. That's all I know. I state that I'm going to go, uh, I'm concerned about our charges and that we should go check them. Uh, okay. That seems like a good plan. Okay, well, because of that, because you answered all these questions truthfully, I will send you into the afterlife gently. What? Uh, what? <laughs> anyone else have any other questions before he goes gently into the afterlife? I do. What's that? Why are you murdering people? <laughs> Well, oh, well, he's going to die. It's a living. Oh, wait, you were asking him. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think he's... Look at his wounds. You don't think he's going to live, do you? Yes. Anyway. <laughs> Let me try... I'll, I'll try some diplomacy with him. Okay. I don't, Sir, I don't know how much longer I can hold back my good friend PowerPoint here. As you can tell, he's <laughs> a really terrible caster and has really bad control over his spells, and he might just kill you by accident. <laughs> but if you, can, if you can tell us, that, if you can tell us who that uh, leader chick was with the uh, pretentious pair of uh, weapons on her, on her token, and uh, where we might be able to uh, find the one who hired you. He said, well, she's a, a guild mistress. She she was the one who gave us the job. I, guild I don't know where great. she gets it from. So we've just destroyed your entire guild. Oh, job well done. The guild has more than one master. That, does, that seems terribly inefficient and tiring. A man cannot serve more than one master. 
Uh, we have a great many masters and twice as many journeymen. Would you say you have eight bosses? <laughs> Tour, maybe we should go uh, check on these guys right away. So every time you screw up an assassination, concerned. you have eight people telling you you, you did a bad job. <laughs> did the guards arrive yet? <laughs> um... Let's go before yes, we get actually, tied down. You, and... you can hear the the sounds of uh, I will turn banging over. the door down. I will turn over oh, these two go. to the guards and explain I, the uh, situation. I, I, exactly. I head off before I get tied down in a long conversation with the guards and head over to the uh, Aylwick Tavern or what's not to check on our friends. Okay. Oh damn it! I forgot to I forgot to use my interrogation song. I'm thankful for that. <laughs> I will let the guards know that we have to go check on our friends, but if they have any further questions, they can find me at the Aylwick Okay. Inn. Okay. Um, well, the guards just basically ask what happened. You tell them that you were attacked and you killed your attackers. Um, they don't seem to have any more questions than that. All right. Uh, I'll leave the attackers in their care. Okay. And head off to the whatever wick in. Okay. Um so, yeah, everybody heads to Alwix. Okay, you arrive there in the middle of the night. It's uh, boarded up and closed. They're out of business already. Perhaps this wasn't <laughs> such a good establishment. Um, you pound on the door, and after a while, somebody comes to the door. Yes. What's going on here? I said, one of the guests may be in danger. We just need to talk with him. What? From danger from what? We need to see one of your guests brandishing our weapon. I'll send someone to get the guard. Yeah, well, but but they may be they may be too late. They're already tied up with the last bunch of people that we killed. <laughs> I say using diplomacy. Okay. <laughs> they what? Uh, um, never mind. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he calls to somebody in the back room, and a, a young boy comes out, and he tells the boy to go forth and fetch the guard. Mm -hmm. um, what are the rest of you going to do? You're standing in the street outside of the inn. Uh, I, as he's well, going to go fetch the guard, boy, I tell him, we've already notified the guards. We're just here ahead of them. We'd like to check on our friends. We know they're here, and they are expecting us tomorrow morning. We'd just oh. like to make sure they're okay. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I shouldn't let you in. It, it's, it's, I, I think we should wait for the guard. You can come with us. Like, we're not asking to go up and check on them by ourselves. I take out my loot. Okay. <laughs> he, he looks at you. Wait, weren't, weren't you here earlier? This is Silvermane D'Artagnan, your famous gnomish bard. Or D'Artagnan, Silvermane, Silvermane. I always forget which one it is. Um, okay. I do too sometimes. <laughs> I said, well, I, I guess it would be okay. Um, and he takes you upstairs. Um, you can see most of the people in the inn appear to be awake now. They're trying to figure out who's banging on the door in the middle of the night. Uh -huh. um, you make your way to the room and, and both Arlen and Aliana are there. When they see you, they seem so unsurprised. What, what happened? Uh, there's been an attack. We were attacked in our rooms uh, at the Leaping Pike. Um, it seemed related to our business with you, uh, so we just wanted to make sure you were both all right. Yeah, we're fine. Why would someone attack you? Well, no reasons. Maybe That's it was the bandits trying to get revenge on you? Uh, that is a 23 insight to see if their response is genuine. It is. Yes. Um, now, there's nobody else here. Is it just us and, the, us and, and Arlen here having this conversation? Uh, well, there's another, a number of people in the hall kind of craning to listen in. I say in a low voice so only Arlen can hear. So no one you know would have any reason to, to trouble you? I have no idea who'd want such a thing. 
Okay. Perhaps, Arlen, would we, you mind if we... We not, don't know anyone in this area. Arlen, would you mind if we stepped into your room for some privacy? There's some questions that need uh, to be asked. Of course, bring yourselves in. Okay. I'll be there in a minute. I have to confer with the innkeeper on uh, security. Okay. Okay. And then I'll join you back in the room. I'm going to watch the door. Once like we're the inside door. the room, I'll, I'll, while watching him carefully, ask him what he knows about a chest. A chest? A How is it? Box. Uh, a fanciful box, I believe, is the term used. A box? Yeah, I believe there was uh, a couple of decorative boxes in the dowry. What is in them? Um, Aliana runs over and she, she, the, most of the stuff that was in the cart has obviously been unpacked and is in the room currently. Um, she starts rummaging through it and she produces a small box which contains uh, a necklace and some earrings and then another slightly larger one that appears to be just a, a lacquer box uh, decorated with gold inlay. Is there anything in it? Um, Would you mind if we see the contents? She says, well, I don't know how to open it. That would probably be the one they're looking for then. Do you mind if I take a look at this? Um, I look, is there any lock or any indication of how it's opened? Uh, go ahead and give me a thievery check. Okay, I, will it help if I have thieves tools? Uh, well, you're just trying to determine if there's something not first. Okay, so. gotcha. You know, we could probably... I, I think I know how to get it open without falling for any traps. Uh, is it by rolling a 15 plus 6? No, I was... 21, give me. I was thinking of uh, summoning an unseen servant and having him smash it to pieces. Okay. Um, you don't see... there's There don't appear to be any external hinges or yeah. lock mechanism or anything on it. Mm -hmm. Um... It looks like it may be some kind of a puzzle box. Like, I is tell there anything to move or shake to get the puzzle box open. Uh, like Howard, go ahead, roll. Give me a roll. Yeah, I also was going about to do that, but I wanted to do the other one. Okay. Um. Yeah, you are familiar with some of these, uh, and. My arcane rolls a bit crummier. <laughs> yeah, um, you you are able to determine uh, that there's a couple of symbols in the box which, when depressed, allow you to slide one portion of the box aside and see what's inside. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but that doesn't tell me how to do it. No, no, you are able to. Oh, okay. Uh, nothing to see here. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, you open the box. Yeah. And inside you see a small silver circlet um, with a white stone set in it. Do I, how about arcane check on the, uh, on the small silver circlet? Prior to that, I that. asked the young lady if she recognizes the circlet. She does not. Can I roll to see if I feel anything magical about the circlet? Go ahead. Um, yeah. It definitely seems to be magical in nature. Hmm. There's something to the arcane of this. I oh my god, I just realized. Where's that, where's that tavern keeper? <laughs> um, it's a small, sur so, a small silver, how small? No, it's, it's, it's just a, a circle designed to be worn in the head. Okay, with gotcha. A, with a with a fairly yeah. decent sized white stone in it. Um, gotcha. You're not familiar with the type of stone is, but it's a smooth round white stone. I ask uh, the young lady who she's betrothed to. Um, it's a, a gentleman in in Corgos, um, named Tavares. And who, 
who and I'm who sorry we yeah who are you <laughs> uh, she's just like a, the daughter of a, a wealthy merchant from the countryside and the merchant offered this your father offered this dowry uh, yes just a bunch of things that have been in the family Um, well, this is, this, is no this, this, this box though was, I, I think supposed to go to Tavares' brother who's in the, the priesthood. I understand. I think it's, it's clear to me, miss that the assassins that were sent for us this evening were looking for this box. This seems to be, uh, something that was clearly held secret from you and is of obvious importance. Uh, I believe some more immediate protection might be in order. Why would they be after this? It's pretty, but it's not that doesn't look that valuable to me. Well, Miss, you don't it even has, know what it is. How can you know if it's valuable it's, or not? It's I say it's I say in a quiet voice that it has arcane properties. Oh. Uh, I'm going to carefully put it back in the box and close it up since I know how to do that before it explodes. Okay. And where's that damn uh, keeper? Okay. Uh, the innkeeper has actually gone downstairs to talk to the guards that have now arrived. Oh, my bluff didn't work on him? Oh. Uh, well, you don't know. He's talking to the guards at the moment. <laughs> um. Okay. Okay, so she asked, "What are you, what what are you saying? What do you mean, more we immediate measures? We don't we don't. Well, ask, answer me this: If five assassins had come in here during the night, would you and your servant have been able to fend them off? Uh, no. Then I think you understand what I mean by more immediate protection, Miss. Um. We need to be closer to you. Okay. That, that's where the disdain sets in. <laughs> <laughs> she looks kind of nervously over at the gnome. Uh, I'll, 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 be as, uh, I'll be as diplomatic as I can. <laughs> I mean, I suppose that would be all right. You are in the safest possible hands in this city in our presence, my lady. <laughs> I look surprised when he says that. <laughs> You have fine. The, you have four of the finest heroes of this time and this age at your disposal. Nothing will happen to you. However, I say with utter conviction. Word of the failed attempt has surely already spread, as likely since uh, the two surviving members are with the city guard that they attacked the wrong location. I do not feel that keeping you here is the safest route. Uh, we should either depart or move locations. To where? I don't believe we'll be able to find an inn at this time of night, but I do believe we'll be able to leave at this time of night. What time uh, of night is it, by the way? Well, it's now probably like two or three in the morning. Um, she says, but the ship isn't leaving until the day after tomorrow. <laughs> the ship may not be leaving, but you'll be much more difficult to find camping rather than in an inn well let's i think tonight we should all just spend the rest of the night here and then tomorrow i think you have a good plan tour i yeah. think it's unlikely they're going to strike the inn this inn in force uh tonight they will probably need some time to gather their forces that sounds um, like a compromise that will keep everyone happy i suggest okay. we take watches i okay. agree Yep. Okay. Um, the rest of the evening passes pretty much without incident. Mm -hmm. um, and you wake in the next morning. Everybody gets their healing surges back and an action point. And their daily power. Yay! Oh, I mean, yes. Yeah, that too. Um. Uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> Damn it. Perhaps we could ask around a bit today. While some of us are getting these folks to safety, we could ask around a bit about this guild mistress 
and where that they might have. Um, they okay. Um, That's probably not going to be an easy answer to get. An <laughs> Assassin's Guild boss? Probably not well You're, known amongst the peasants of a city. I, I'll, yeah. I'll take excel aside and say you're likely to give more information to them than gain any information by asking questions like that i think this might be a task for our clever gnome um by the way just just to excuse me some confusion understanding that within the, the guild system that a a master isn't it's not like there's a single master for a guild yes it's just a rank within the yes the guild. Uh, I guess I could poke around, um, but nobody knew anything. I mean, it, it's not a local organization, so I'd have to find, like, basically the Grey Mirror Inn or its equivalent. Yeah, if it's, it's not a local organization, then how did they hire them just today? It's a, think of it more like a global organization that had a chapter ah, here. Right. right. Or, or that they were already on the tail of these particular individuals. That seems right. most likely of all. Well, okay. Well, since I, I, since I know something about the organization, do I know maybe where I could make contact with some people to rough up for information? Um, you don't know of anybody in this area, but uh, you do know, however, that uh, the woman seems about like the sort you would expect from the guild. Well, um, the yeah, other guys but, seem but a little bit less competent. I, I need right, someone the other alive. Guys seem a little the, yeah. the, but the rest of the guys seem a little bit less competent than you would have expected. Um, and the one guy who ran away, that doesn't fit what you know about them at all. I think so I'll be looking she for someone who ran away. She hired, she, yeah, exactly. He may be the one to write down. Was there, you could see, is there any wounded, you know, look, look around for a wounded thief type? I think, well, I mean, uh, your, your, your suspicion is that... Uh, the woman really seems like a guild member. The other guys may have just yeah, been for, kind just of local, local town. Local town. muscle, yeah. Goons. It's early in the morning, correct? I'll be, uh, yeah. I'll be in the room with the old man and the lady getting them to move quickly. Okay. And then shuffling them out the door. I will gently I, ask the lazy ranger if he wouldn't mind getting their horses and cart ready to go. Out of earshot of tour, by the way. Down in the common room that morning, I'm spreading tales of our heroism and exploits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll go and and uh, get the cart and whatnot ready. Okay. How long do we have until we have to get out of here? Well, I mean, you've got another day before the ship is supposed to depart. Uh, I'm going to shift my clothes a little bit, and uh, I will go in search of a guy who ran away. Okay. I'll uh, join the rest. Yes. Yeah. I just want to basically find out, get like some word of where he might be hiding, so then I can uh, go get backup. Or maybe I'll just beat the shit out of him myself. I don't know. Gruff the crime dire wolf. <laughs> well, I said, give me a, give me a streetwise roll. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, you, uh, after talking to people around the town, you do find out that there is an uh, abandoned uh, warehouse down near the docks that is probably the place that anybody in the criminal element would be hiding out if they were trying not to be found. Uh, okay. Is it likely that, uh, just from my sort of general knowledge, was, is it likely that he would have backup there, or could I just, like, find him in a shack and beat the shit out of him or something? Um, you doubt that, I mean, you pretty much wiped out these guys, and your impression is that they were probably just local talent, and that the only person who was actually really a, a true guild member was the, the woman. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead down there, and, uh, without taking a lot of time away from the rest of the party in a annoying solo adventure, uh, I will put on my intimidating cap and try and get as much information as I can out of him. Okay. What are the rest of the party going to do? I'm just staying with, you know, after I spread some exploits, just staying with these guys. Prep okay. them to leave as quickly as possible and await yeah. the bard's return. 
yeah, it doesn't take too long to get everything packed back up in the cart. Um, okay. Uh, Grand, um, you managed to find this place with a little bit of trouble, but uh, it's basically a rundown warehouse. Um, as you make your way inside, you see the entire place, the, the entire inside of it, appears to be spattered with blood. Um, it must be the place, then. <laughs> An illegal meatpacking operation. Yeah, as you, as, you, as you check out further, you find that is definitely not the case. Um, you see the guy that got away, and he looks like he's been done in very badly. Uh, cut like in, ribbons. Incompetently? Ribbons. Oh, okay. No, no, like by an animal. Really? Yeah. Well, it must have been that McGruff the Crime Direwolf. I guess I'll sift through his possessions and search the area to see if I can find anything. Okay. Um, again, he just has a short sword and a couple of daggers, um, some crappy leather armor. I'll find a local that I can intimidate since I am a local crime lord and uh, see if anyone saw <laughs> anything. Okay. Um, no, no one has seen anything. Fine. Okay. Back to the party. Okay. So you guys, the rest of you, you've gotten the cart packed up and then loaded up. Where are you going to? I don't know. Wherever that ship is. Oh, well, the ship's down at the dock. Why don't we just rough it for... I thought we were going to rough it. Yeah. So we're going to head out of town, I don't know, five kilometers that way. Okay. Um, and make a nice cozy camp for a day. Okay. Okay, you uh, go fair ways out of town and make camp. Um, you basically just spend, spend the night there? Yeah. Okay, and setting up watches? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, what's the order of the watches? Third watch. First. I'll take the last. <laughs> oh, whatever. That puts second, you got second watch. Okay. Um, Tor, on your watch? It's always third watch. <laughs> um, you... You know, it starts out uneventfully, but halfway through, you think you hear something. Making a, it sounds almost like a like a fluttering noise. Okay. Um, traveling, it seems to be moving north to south, just off to the west of you. Sound like a bird? I sort of. All right, I will stand up from my position. I will attempt to move towards the noise, sort of slowly and quietly, but never more than. I'll say 20 feet from where everybody's sleeping. Okay. The noise seems to be receding. It, it sounds almost as if it's sound traveling sort of parallel to the path that you took. And it slowly fades off into the darkness. Let's see if I'm smart enough to actually realize what's just happened. So that's a 20 or a 19 insight. Would I? Yeah. It. I mean, if you had to guess, it sounds like something was flying. And it sounds like it was generally going in the same direction that you were traveling, but it seems to have just missed you. Sure. Does it sound like what I would expect a message to be passed? Like, a, I don't know, a pigeon or it, whatever? No, you wouldn't have been able to, heard a, to have heard a pigeon at any real distance. All right. So it just if you'd heard like a pigeon, you would, have, it would have, you would have seen it probably. This was, and pigeons don't generally fly at night. It's this is definitely something much bigger. All right. Well, I will, I will keep quiet and I will continue my watch. Okay. Um, the rest of the night passes without any further incident, and everybody awakens in the, the morning. Yep. Head for the ship. Okay. You make your way back to to town. Mm -hmm. 
Um, are, they, are they all okay with this camping out in the woods thing? Well, they're a little freaked out, but they're at this point kind of doing what, what you think is best. Yes. If they're doing what we think is best, um, where are they keeping this chest with the whatever in it? The circle? Um, well, it's with the rest of the their goods. I'll ask, uh, I don't know what to call him, the gnome, I guess, Grand, um, if he thinks it would be dangerous to carry the circlet rather than have it in the chest. Like, just carry it on someone's person? Well, they're looking for a chest, and they likely don't, if they do know what's in it, their priority will still be to take the chest. We just keep the chest in plain sight and where it is, but there's no need for the circlet to be in it. If they do manage to take the chest, we well, still have the circlet. If they manage to take the chest, it's probably because they've killed the rest of us, so I suppose that they would get away and then realize they don't have the circlet because it's under one of our bodies. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> in the grand tales that you tell, have you never told of assassins who work in stealth and intrigue? Or are they all just murder hobos? <laughs> no, those are party members. <laughs> I would be happy to sew the circlet into my small clothes where none shall discover it. It's supposed to be a present. We don't want it to smell. (laughs) Just trying to help. Is that a pawn shop? No one will know. (laughs) Um... I don't know. I mean, I suppose one of us could take it, but honestly, the technically until it's given away, it's the property of the young lady. The young lady who will do what we tell her. And she seems kind of unimpressed with it. I will be happy to have I mean, the circlet ensconce my family jewels so that none shall claim it. Uh, <sighs> I talk to the young lady and ask her and tell her what my plan is, that the chest is an obvious location and they can, it would make sense to remove it from the chest and keep it elsewhere. Uh, okay. Then I will ask Grand if he would be so kind as to open the box. Uh, okay, fine. This is a terrible idea, but fine. I want to put something in there, like a, like a, like a note with a smiley face, or someone takes a dump or something. <laughs> so, so what are you doing now? Uh, Picture of the gnome's junk. <laughs> you gonna take? Exactly. You gonna take it out? I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna place it in a small pack or in a small pouch, shall we say? Okay. Uh, roll a d20 for me. Okay, um, so you, you take it out, you place it in a small pouch. And then we carry on with our day. Okay. Who's, ca- who's carrying it? Uh, I'm fine with it. At the moment, I am carrying it. If someone feels that they should be carrying it, they're welcome to take it. I just don't I feel, feel like... like I should be carrying it. Uh, I think Tor is a fine guardian of the, guardian oh. of the circlet. All right, then. Okay. You no, know, on so the other hand, t- if we get into a big uh, uh, TPK, I could simply turn invisible and run away. I'd probably already be running away. Uh, what's TPK stand for? Total party kill. <laughs> it's an ancient. Uh, it's it's a legend of among us barbarians. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, you make your you make your way back to town and down to the docks with no problem. Um, and there the captain of the ship greets you. They load everything up onto the ship. Um, and unless you guys want to do anything else in particular, they're going to uh, set sail. For adventure? Yes. Mm. It's just for a three-hour tour. I'll take out okay. my loot. Oh, man, that loot is going in the ocean when you're not looking. <laughs> I will tell the sailors of some of our adventures as we go. Is Gron's loot play considered an attack? Uh, depending on what he does with it, yeah. <laughs> no, I meant the audible sound that he makes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Hey, okay. I, I only said I could play it. I didn't say I could tune it. <laughs> you should count yourself lucky. I was kind of considering hooking one of my MIDI keyboards up and uh, making it hooking it to a really he, bad he loop patch. He did actually very specifically say that. I do, I do consider myself lucky and slightly disappointed that you didn't do that. 